Greetings, transporters. It's Dr. Kelsey Ralph, and today we are going to talk about the problem with relying exclusively on the TTI measure of congestion. So each year, the Texas Transportation Institute releases the Urban Mobility Report. The primary feature of this report is a measure of congestion for each major city in the United States. The report measures congestion using what's known as the Travel Time Index, or TTI. To calculate the travel time index, we simply divide the peak hour travel time by the free flow travel time. So in this equation, when we talk about the peak hour travel time, we mean how long a trip takes during the rush hour. And when we talk about the free flow travel time, we're talking about how long a trip takes in the middle of the night when there are very few cars on the roadway. So let's consider an example. If it takes 25 minutes to travel somewhere during the peak period, during the rush hour, but just 20 minutes during the off-peak when traffic is free-flowing, the TTI would be 1.25, which is 25 divided by 20. So each year, the TTI is widely reported in the popular media, but there are a number of problems with this measure. And in this video, we're going to focus on just one of those problems, and that is that the TTI focuses exclusively on congestion, but it says nothing about how long drivers have to travel. The, the idea from this video comes from Joe Courtright's 2010 report called Driven Apart. And I really recommend checking it out for more information about this topic and other problems with the TTI. So to understand the problems with relying exclusively on the travel time index, let's start by comparing a hypothetical pair of cities, Sprawlville and a compact city. In Sprawlville, destinations are far apart. So the average trip is 20 miles in length and takes about 40 minutes in the off-peak when, there no, when there's no traffic. In the compact city, by contrast, uh, destinations are closer together, and as a result, the average trip is just 10 miles in length and takes 20 minutes to complete during the off-peak. Now let's imagine that drivers in each city encounter about five minutes of delay during the peak period. Overall, that means that drivers in Sprawlville will spend 45 minutes traveling during the peak and drivers in the compact city will spend 25 minutes. But which area is more congested? To find out, we can calculate the TTI for each area by dividing the peak hour travel time by the free flow travel time. 45 minutes divided by 40 equals 1.125 for Sprawlville. And 25 minutes divided by 20 equals 1.25 for the compact city. A higher score indicates more congestion. So by this measure, congestion is worse in the compact city. But which city would you rather live in? Total trip times in Sprawlville are much longer than those in the compact city, even when there is no congestion at all. Not everyone would agree, but I would certainly prefer to travel in the compact city. So this is a hypothetical situation, but what about a real pair of cities? This table provides the same information for two U.S. cities, Charlotte and Chicago. The precise numbers differ, but the pattern is the same. While the amount of delay is nearly identical in the two cities, they have very different free flow travel conditions. Drivers in Charlotte have to travel 19 miles per trip and would spend 38 minutes driving during free flow conditions in the middle of the night. By contrast, drivers in Chicago have much shorter distances to travel and spend just 23 minutes traveling in free flow. When we calculate the travel time index by dividing peak hour travel times by free flow travel times, we get the sense that congestion is much worse in Chicago. And I don't know about you, I would rather spend 33 minutes getting to my destination than 48. Let's take a look at another example to further illustrate the fundamental shortcomings of relying exclusively on the TTI. This table illustrates data from Portland, Oregon in two time periods. Between 1982 and 2007, the TTI score worsened from 1.07 to 1.29 in Portland. By this measure, congestion appears to be getting worse in Portland over time. Yet during this period, the average travel time fell from 54 minutes to 43 minutes. Trips in 2007 took less time than trips in 1982. This is primarily because trip distances decreased during this period. Now, we should be clear that the amount of delay certainly did increase over time, from four minutes to 10 minutes. And to the extent that driving in congested conditions feels more onerous, 
driving in 2007 probably does feel worse than driving in 1982. Nevertheless, the key point is that if we only focus on congestion and delay, we are missing a huge part of the story, how far people have to travel to get to where they want to go. In this next slide, I'm offering data for a handful of US cities so that you can compare travel conditions on your own and make your own judgment about which city you would prefer to live in and travel in. So to recap, the travel time index is a measure of congestion calculated by dividing the peak hour travel time by the free flow travel time. The measure says nothing about total travel time and obscures the importance of trip distances. Relying on just the TTI offers a misleading measure of travel conditions when comparing cities or evaluating trends over time. And that's it. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye.